If you've been around on YouTube for a while, you've probably heard of or seen a video titled Blank Room Soup. Many people believe that this is a dark web video of a man being forced to eat his wife that's been killed and cooked into a soup by these two Teletubbies. But that's not actually the case. In my opinion, the stories and theories behind where the four Blank Room Soup videos came from are actually far more interesting than the classic dark web cop-out. I feel like I know a great deal about this mystery thanks to everyone's culminating efforts, so I'm here to wrap up all the loose ends that I can, and hopefully you'll find this very interesting. Big shout out to Lucia from The Ghost in My Machine, and to Rainbot for their discoveries that helped me make this video. So sit back and relax as we dive into the classic internet mystery that is Blank Room Soup. On November 26, 2005, exactly 9 months and 12 days after the launch of YouTube.com, a video would be uploaded to the site titled Freaky Soup Guy by a user named Renaissance Men. The video is 1 minute and 5 seconds long, and is what most people know today as Blank Room Soup. Despite what your personal opinion on this video is, it's incredibly ominous. So I could only imagine what early YouTube users were thinking when they saw this come up on their recommendations. With most videos of this nature, it spread like wildfire. People started to come up with theories on the story behind it. Theories that, mind you, have absolutely no evidence behind them. The most popular theory, like I mentioned, was that this video appeared on the dark web and the two figures in the costumes murdered this man's wife and made him eat her in the form of a soup, hence why he's crying. Ultimately, at the time, people knew nothing about this video, and especially nothing about the two figures in costumes or who the character was. The best chances at a lead was trying to figure out who the character was, who made the costumes, and then maybe we could figure out who was inside of them and ask them a few questions. But unfortunately, it would be a long time before anyone would have a clue on who these figures were. In 2015, an entire decade after Freaky Soup Guy was uploaded, popular YouTuber Rainbot joined the investigation and was able to track down a Daily Motion account by the name of Ray Ray TV, which had many videos featuring the characters that appeared in Blank Room Soup. Most of these videos are very lighthearted. A stark contrast to Blank Room Soup, which was in fact uploaded onto their account but was like the original YouTube video titled Freaky Soup Guy. And the description read, A clip of people who look like us doing something to someone that we would never do. We promise. Judging by the description and its use of first person, it seems that whoever runs the Ray Ray TV account is the owner of these costumes and is possibly one of the people inside of them. If we trust what the description is saying, then the people inside of the costumes on the Ray Ray TV account are different from the people who were inside of the costumes in the Blank Room Soup video. How the people from Blank Room Soup got their hands on these costumes is something we will discuss later. On the account there is also a video extremely similar to Blank Room Soup titled Soup Torture, but we'll also get into that later. Throughout many of the descriptions of these videos, Rainbot was able to find the name Raymond S. Percy appear many times, who luckily enough is the key person we needed to solve most of this case. 
Raymond S. Percy is surprisingly famous. Well, famous enough to have his own Wikipedia, meaning that getting enough information on his life and how he links to Blank Room Soup and Ray Ray TV was actually quite simple. Raymond S. Percy, who I'll now refer to as Percy, was born in Eagle Rock, California on February 17, 1975. On his IMDb page, we can see that he's most known for working in the art department for the movie Wreck-It Ralph, he voiced Flash the Sloth in the movie Zootopia, and he worked in the animation department for The Simpsons from 1996 to 2010. However, what we're most interested in was his independent work that he started in the 90s, that being the character Ray Ray. Ray Ray was a character of Percy's that represented the, quote, sense of alienation and deep-seated need to entertain that he was feeling. In 2002, Percy teamed up with his colleague Paul Pistor, and they were able to create a wearable Ray Ray suit that could be used to star in skits and performances. And that's exactly what they were used for. Ray Ray TV was just one of the many accounts that Percy and his team had set up for posting videos of Ray Ray related content online. The rest being Ray Ray World, Ray Ray Land, Ray Ray Phil, and Ray Ray Vision. While that's all well and good, it doesn't exactly explain the mystery behind Blank Room Soup. As I mentioned beforehand, the description for Freaky Soup Guy on Ray Ray TV indicates that this wasn't created by Percy's crew. So who did it, why, and how they got their hands on two Ray Ray suits is unknown. Rainbot, like us, wanted to know the answers to these questions, so she tracked down his contact info and sent an email to Percy asking what the story behind Blank Room Soup was. The following is a summarized version of Percy's response. Ray Ray is a performance I created years ago. That's also the two characters' names. I created them as a way to visualize and have fun with my feelings of loneliness and isolation at the time. Ray Ray didn't have the tools to communicate or express their thoughts, but still stood out and drew attention from the outside world. One time we performed at a club on the Sunset Strip in Hollywood. It had such a small backstage that the dressing room was a dirty, broken down RV in the alley behind the club, which in fact didn't have a lock on the door. After the show, when my group went back to the RV, we found that most of our Ray Ray props and costumes had been stolen. A few weeks later, I got home, turned on my computer, and saw an email with an attachment. It was the video that everyone is now calling Blank Room Soup. I put it on YouTube so I could share it with my group. The strangest part to me was that the Ray Rays in the video moved and behaved exactly the way they should. It's something that new performers had to train for weeks to get right, and at the time there wasn't much video online for reference. Later, I was sent a link to this. The link leads to a YouTube channel titled Adana, which had uploaded the aforementioned video, Soup Torture. Percy then proceeds to tell us that there are more clips than the ones posted, and that the last one he received was a few years ago. So now we know that there are more videos than just the original Blank Room Soup that was created by whoever stole the Ray Ray costumes, and that these videos are being posted online by his colleagues that he shared them with. It's also worth noting that Renaissance Men, the channel who posted Freaky Soup Guy on YouTube back in 2005, is most likely Percy's account, as it also includes footage of projects he has worked on in the past. With that out of the way, let's take a look at Soup Torture, also known as Blank Room Soup 2, and then two other videos I found that people have dubbed Blank Room Soup 3 and Blank Room Soup 4. If anyone knows of any more videos featuring the stolen Ray Ray costumes other than the four I'm showcasing, then let me know at nightfairinquiries at gmail.com or on Twitter at twitter.com slash nightfair underscore yt.
most people like to end their investigation here, and are satisfied with what Perseus told us, that some of the Ray Ray suits were stolen and used to create these eerie videos. And while that doesn't exactly give us a motive for why the thieves did this, it does offer the most amount of closure for this case. However, if you're like me, then you probably want to go a bit deeper, and there's much more to cover, as this is only the tip of the iceberg. I recommend that you take everything that follows with a grain of salt, as I'm currently unsure about the validity of the following post. Let me introduce to you a new player to the game, a horror theorist by the name of Mr. Enigma. Enigma created a post on his own web board in 2017, two years after Rainbot's video was published, where he details his investigation into the subject. As a side note, there's a Ray Ray TV account on both the Daily Motion, which was the one that Rainbot found, as well as there being one on YouTube, which Enigma is about to talk about. They both post the exact same videos, so don't think of them as separate entities. I'll now read a few excerpts from the post. To start my investigation, I started talking to the YouTube account Ray Ray TV on January 1st, 2016 thinking I was speaking to either Raymond Percy or a representative. He gave me information about Ray Ray, who they are, and information about the suits. He also confirmed that he did indeed have a back and forth email conversation with Rainbot the year prior. All throughout the conversation, he would talk in third person and ask me for my real name and location, which I never gave. While Enigma was talking to Ray Ray TV, he also got into contact with another person who claimed to be a crew member that worked with Percy, and as Enigma states, wishes to remain anonymous. This anonymous crew member reinforced the story of how the suits were stolen in Hollywood. He also stated that Ray Ray TV was in fact the crew's official YouTube channel, but he was unable to log in, meaning that Percy probably changed the password. Enigma tells Ray Ray TV that he had spoken with a crew member, which made Ray Ray TV very upset, saying that Enigma went behind his back. After a few months had passed, the crew member told Enigma that he had messaged Percy about the situation, and Percy said that he hasn't used the Ray Ray TV account for a very long time. Enigma sends screenshots of the YouTube DMs from Ray Ray TV to the crew member, who responds by saying that Enigma must have been talking to someone that hacked the account. Percy promptly changed the password to the account, and the hacker was locked out. After this, the hacker was able to get into contact via email with Enigma, so Enigma must have told the Ray Ray TV account who he was, thinking that he was talking to Percy or a crew member. This email included a link to a strange YouTube channel titled Adana's Children, along with a confession. The hacker confessed to being the one who stole the Ray Ray suits and props back in 2005. First off, if you remember way back to the email that Percy sent to Rainbot, which included a link to the YouTube channel Adana that uploaded soup torture, well, that's directly tied to this channel that Enigma was just sent a link to, Adana's Children. The videos on Adana's Children is strange. The first two don't really make any sense, and the second two, titled Performance Number 83 and Performance Number 67, seem to be performances starring the Ray Ray characters. We'll talk about this later. If you want to know why the hacker allegedly stole the suits, here's what he told Enigma in the email. Once upon a time, there was an artist. An alchemist, if you will. For magic is the highest form of art, and all art is an impure form of magic. He was a confused soul. Was he an artist tapping into his own insecurities? Or was he a corporate artisan, though skilled and respected, working for corporate entities? Corporate entities are created on will and fueled by ego, neither good nor evil, but like religions, they benefit from those who join, invest, and consume. If one benefits from a corporate system, oftentimes the corporation will feed their will and ego. Well, what does that have to do with one's insecurities? one's well of creativity. Corporate entities are gods in and of themselves. So is your own heart. We saw this conflict within Raymond Percy's special shows. Although it was an attempt to worship the god of his heart, the corporate gods would interfere, if not with his schedule, 
but with what can and cannot be done, much like a distant nagging voice from the parents who raised you. We saw this in his shows, we experienced this, and it was a shame that this thought, form, this servitor, this character was wasted away, trapped by the limitations of a creator and his collaborators. So when the conditions were right, we freed them. Not just the suits, we freed them. Awards and accolades were won, addictions were healed, a side effect. We never intended ill nor goodwill onto these creators, but correlation becomes causation when repeated. We are not the bad guy, but in a world of dogs, one catches fleas. Just as carnal sin can create a pure and loving child. Just as stealing is a form of liberation, art, and destruction. So if we believe what the hacker is saying, it seems that this whole ordeal is some sort of fan mail, and that the hacker wanted to free Percy's expression of art from its corporate shackles. And there's a little evidence to back this up. In the email, the hacker claims to have seen the Ray Ray performances in person. And if we assume that Adana's children is run by the hacker, then we can infer that this is true because the footage of these performances that has been uploaded onto the account could quite possibly have been taken by the hacker. This also goes along with what Percy said in his email, that not much footage of how the character Ray Ray acted was online, so only someone who came and saw them in person could replicate how the character acted to such a great degree. Also the name Adana's children makes it seem like there is more than one person running the account, which would indicate that this account is run by the hacker, considering how the hacker speaks with the term we when referring to themselves. Strangely enough, at the end of the email, the hacker also claimed that they talked to Rainbot posing as Percy, meaning that Rainbot never actually got into contact with Percy via email. However, I highly doubt the validity of this statement, as there's not much rhyme or reason to indicate that that's what actually happened. Like I mentioned beforehand, everything that I just discussed shouldn't be easily believed, as it's very possible that Enigma fabricated this entire story about a hacker and made it seem legitimate by adding explanations for evidence we already had. Enigma could have possibly just wanted to bandwagon onto the Rainbow investigation for some internet fame. But before you come to a decision concerning the validity of Enigma's post, let me read out to you the conclusions I've come to. As I see it, we have four main theories to work with. The first being that Rainbot contacted the real Raymond Percy, who told her the whole truth about the suits being stolen and used to create blank room soup for unknown reasons. And that's the end of the story. The second, and least likely, is that the hacker from Enigma's investigation is real, and this hacker was actually the person who stole the suits back in 05 to free them from their corporate shackles. If you ask me, I'm not very inclined to believe that the hacker ever existed in the first place, but we shouldn't completely rule out Enigma's post, as there might be some truth to it concerning these next theories. The third theory is that the suits were indeed stolen and used to create blank room soup by an unknown perpetrator, but due to Rainbot, a popular YouTuber, emailing Percy about the subject, he began to catch on about how popular his characters were becoming due to blank room soup and the whole rumor behind it. Thus to perpetuate this sort of scary dark web mystery, he acted as a hacker when he was contacted by Enigma knowing that this will cause the case to gain even more traction, and then his characters and performances will become more well known. Meaning that Enigma wasn't necessarily lying, he just didn't know that the hacker he was talking to was actually Percy the whole time, which would make sense on how this hacker had access to every one of Percy's accounts. The fourth and final theory is that it's possible Percy fabricated this entire incident. Like I mentioned, possibly to draw attention towards his performances. If we believe this, then we believe that Percy was the one who created Blank Room Soup. When he was emailed by Rainbot, he told her a completely fake story about how the costumes were stolen 10 years prior, and that someone had sent him the links to the Blank Room Soup videos. Like the last theory, Percy could have just posed as a hacker when questioned via the Ray Ray TV account, and then told Enigma that he was the one who stole the costumes and hacked his own email account to talk to Rainbot. 
Why Percy would do all this is unknown, but I believe that it was for marketing reasons, as now more than ever, more people know about the character Ray Ray simply because of Blank Room Soup. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what you believe in. I've provided you with all the evidence I could find, and while it is in fact very convoluted and confusing, I do believe that the truth lies somewhere in this video. So let me know what you think, and what sort of theories you have pertaining to Blank Room Soup. As of now, it doesn't seem like we're going to get any new information about this case. So I hope that this can finally put the rest of uh, most people's theories behind this iconic video. And no, it's not a video from the dark web. There's literally no information that suggests that, so please, let's finally sup, spreading around the notion that this man is being forced to eat his wife by the two guys in costumes. If you have any suggestions for future video topics, hit me up at nightfairinquiries at gmail.com or on Twitter at twitter.com slash nightfair underscore yt. I hope you were able to enjoy this video and that it wasn't too confusing. Like always, thank you for watching and good night.